<laughs> hey gang, how you doing today? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thank you for joining me today. And thanks for painting. It takes a lot of courage to paint at home. So I'm really proud of you for stepping up and giving this a try. You're gonna do better than you think you're capable of. So keep that in mind as you paint. For today's painting, um, we are going to be painting Hunter and Hunter is a dog that is up for adoption with Labs and Friends. There will be a link below to Labs and Friends if you would like to adopt Hunter or adopt another dog that they have available because I'm really hoping that by the time you watch this video he's already been adopted but they always have dogs um, that need homes so do check those out. And the painting that I did today will go with Hunter whenever he gets adopted for his forever home. So that way they get a little token of appreciation for him. So, but today you get to paint him and he's kind of like a little lazy dog taking a nap on the floor or kind of on his little cushion as a lot of our dogs do that throughout the day while we're busy. So I hope you enjoy the painting process. All right, so what you're gonna see in this video, in the description box below, and all the videos that I produce, there is a supply kit. And in that supply kit is everything that you need for this particular painting, your colors, your brushes, your surfaces to paint on. So check that out and acquire the pieces that you need to paint at home. Um, all right. So another thing that you're gonna see in the description box below is a link to a traceable. And a traceable is perfect for first time and beginner painters to get that initial composition on your canvas before you even start painting. So it's a really good tool to utilize. Um, there is a video on how to transfer your traceable to your canvas and then in the link below uh, where to acquire that traceable. So check those out. With this painting and any painting that you do, I want you to relax. I don't want you to take yourself too seriously. Um, it's just painting. You have permission to paint outside the lines. You have permission to change colors. If you would like to change this into shades of dark gray or shades of light gray to make more of a black or a white dog, you have permission to go off the beaten path. Um, and it's a lot of fun when you do that, more fun than you realize. It may seem kind of kind of scary right now, but give it a try and you'll end up liking it a lot more than you realize. But again, I don't want you taking yourself seriously. I want you to have fun. This is your kind of escape from the world, escape from work, um, a place where you get to enjoy your imagination. That's really all it kind of comes down to. And the more that you paint, the more comfortable you're gonna get with it and the more you're gonna start looking forward to your painting sessions. So for my first time painters, hang in there, keep painting, you're doing better than you think you're capable of. So uh, enough talking, let's go ahead and get you guys started painting. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you're ready to paint. This one's gonna be a nice one and perfect for our lazy day, lazy dog. So make sure you got all your supplies, turn on your favorite music, and as always, make sure you take your progress photos. So once you've got your traceable transferred to your canvas or your panel, we're gonna get some good practice in with our pointy brush or if you wanna try your liner brush um, so you can get more comfort level with this. We're gonna be going over all those lines with black paint. And for my beginner painters, this is really just practice because we are gonna repeat this step at the end of the painting to kind of give it that pop art feel. So as you're doing this step right now, if some of your lines are thicker or thinner than others, or if you can see the texture of the canvas showing through, don't freak out about those. It's okay. What you're doing right now is giving your muscles memory and practice with the brush and the pressure of your brush. So I want you to try with a light pressure and see how skinny of a line you can make. And then I want you to try with a bit more pressure and see how fat that line, um, how much that pressure makes it wider. 
And again, just play with that. If you are one of my first time painters and you're holding your breath right now, laugh at yourself a little bit and take a deep breath. We all tend to hold our breath when we're doing something for the first time. It is not necessarily to our benefit to hold our breath. So as you're doing the eyes on this dog, do notice that I filled in the pupil, the black space on the eye, and you can reference your traceable uh, for that as well. And I did leave that kind of what we call that white catch light, that white dot that either overlaps or is kind of inside that black pupil shape. If you happen to paint over that, don't stress about it. We can reapply that white space at the end of the painting when we do our highlights. Again, breathe and relax. We're just getting good practice. Like anything in life, the more that you do it, the more comfortable you will be with the tools. And in all my classes, I stress that there's really no right or wrong way to paint, especially for beginner painters. The only wrong thing you can do is basically not paint at all. Just the fact that you are at home um, painting on your own, pushing through some of these uncomfortable stages, that's amazing. And I applaud your efforts. Keep going. It just gets better and better the more that you paint. All right. This guy definitely looks like what all of us want to be doing. Binge watching TV and uh, having a lazy day. All right. So pause the video. Take your progress photo. And we're going to move into be painting the background. And I'm going to be using the small uh, flat brush because I'm on an 11 by 14 canvas. If you're on a wider canvas, feel free to use a bigger brush. And I'm going to do kind of a mixture of purple and white. And I don't actually blend all of them together. I'm going to throw some purple on there and then some white. And it's kind of fun to let your colors be kind of um, blocky and blend them directly on your background compared to blending them on your plate. Just another thing to try and another fun aspect to play with. And if you did move right into painting your background after doing your black outline, be very careful when you come up next to that wet black paint. Um, if you happen to get some black paint in your background color, just wipe it off with a paper towel and reapply your background. Acrylic paint is a wonderful medium. If you paint anything today and you don't like it, or if you're using acrylic paint, let it dry and then you can just paint right on top of it again. Acrylic paint is a wonderful medium for beginner painters. So here I actually threw some blue and some purple on here in the same manner that we did the purple and white and just kind of threw it kind of chunky on there and then I'm blending the two colors together on the canvas. My purple is rather dark so there's not a huge different um, uh, gradation between the two as I mix them and the blue kind of actually overpowers it. I will be adding some white in here to kind of change the shade. If you feel like finger painting to blend some of these colors, go right ahead. And if you're painting on a canvas, I do recommend painting the edges of your canvas. It just looks nice when you hang it on the wall and that color wraps around the sides of your canvas. There we go, threw some white on there. And not using a whole lot of pressure, kind of dragging my brush on top of it. The more you move your brush back and forth with this light color on top of your darker colors, the more it blends together and the more you lose that lighter color. Again, this is a fun place to play. So feel free to kind of do what you want to the background and then pause the video and take your progress photo. Now we've got the small flat brush and we're using 
raw umber. And again, we're going from our darkest spaces and working backwards to our lighter areas. And I am kind of doing little dots or little dash marks as I apply this. And I am using the student grade paint that I recommend. Um, I think in the kit, it's the Liquitex Basics. And those are student grade paints to make them a bit more affordable for first time painters. But they are a bit more transparent than the artist grade paint. So I will actually do a second layer of colors on here. Um, but I also encourage you, if you're using the student grade paint, apply it a little bit thicker. So that way it can kind of be a bit more opaque and have a little bit better coverage. Or even here on my painting on the video, you can still see a lot of the white canvas um, through the brush strokes or through that burnt umber color. Where right now I'm painting it a little bit thicker so you can kind of see the difference of the coverage. And again, totally okay if you do need to paint this and then let it dry and paint another layer on top of it. As you get more and more comfortable with paint and you have to go buy another color again, I'm actually going to recommend that you step up and buy the artist, um, artist grade paint, the soft body acrylics. They are going to have a really nice, comfortable, buttery consistency and just kind of see what you like between the two different um, levels of paint. Now as we paint this painting today, this lazy dog, I want you to utilize the pause sections of the video. And when you pause the video, you're going to be utilizing the power of observation. And I want you to take a look at the places where I put this color and the kind of weird abstract shape that they make. And do your best to just kind of mimic that placement and that shape. If your placement is, or your shapes are larger or smaller than what I paint, totally okay. You can always adjust and you can always fill in with one of the other colors. But again, you're just strengthening your observation skills and the way that you look at the world. All right, so you're gonna pause the video, take your progress photo, and we're gonna take that burnt umber with some burnt sienna. So still kind of going for a darker color, but that burnt sienna gives it a bit of that reddish uh, flavor to it. And I am overlapping a few of the spots that I put the burnt umber. And again, I encourage that you apply this paint a little bit thicker if you're using student grade paint. All right, and again, we're starting from our dark spaces and working backwards. And our dark spaces, we call those our shadow areas. Our main color, which is the burnt sienna, is what we call our mid-tone. And then our lightest areas that we're gonna put on, those are called our highlights. The more that you paint, the more comfortable you will get with those terms, and the more comfortable you'll get with looking at an image and identifying the shadows, the mid-tones, and the highlights. So there's no pop quiz, but you are learning a lot right now. And when people ask you about your painting, feel free to repeat anything that I say, or use emotional adjectives to describe your process. It'll make you sound really cool and maybe they'll wanna even come paint with you or try it themselves. And that's one of the fun things about painting is when people watch you do it, it gives them encouragement and um, hopefully permission <laughs> or enough courage to try it themselves. This is a wonderful thing to pass on and inspire other people with. It's one of the reasons why I thoroughly enjoy teaching. All right, so again, I'm still using that uh, burnt sienna and applying it a little bit thicker, but we will be doing a second coat on here. And we're applying this in quite a few areas. Again, if you add more of this color than I do, completely okay. If you haven't taken a deep breath in a while or you realize that you're holding your breath, take a big inhale for me.
So take a progress photo, pause the video, and we're going to be moving into our raw sienna. Just our straight raw sienna. There we go. And again, this one is a bit more on the transparent side, being a student grade paint. So again, ply it thicker. And actually I wanted to go a little bit darker, so I'm actually mixing the raw sienna and the burnt, um, uh, burnt sienna. And we're going to be filling in a good portion of the remaining white space of our canvas, of our dog. And even here, you can play with that pressure of the brush. The more you push your brush against the canvas, the more those brush strokes show up. And you can even see where I placed that color on top of the raw, uh, the raw sienna, or the burnt umber. And it kind of creates a bit of a new color with the two overlapping. All right, it's coming along nicely. You're doing good. Don't freak out if you are seeing a lot of your brush strokes. We, in the art world, we call that style. And it's okay to have a sloppy style. I paint with a palette knife and I have a very sloppy style. If you want to check out some of my work, um, go to lovejoycreations.com. And you can see my wildlife palette knife style. But we're not going for perfection here. We are just going for the act of creating and the act of learning a new skill. I do recommend that you do this painting more than once and maybe even switch out colors. If you want to do a black dog, you would switch out each of the colors with different shades of black and dark gray. If you want to do a white dog here, you would actually switch it out with shades of light gray and almost pure white. Again, working from that dark backwards to our lightest areas. And do your best to be kind to yourself as you're going through the process. Um, our brain interprets, th interprets things in a very cool, but sometimes very annoying manner. And the white of the canvas fights your interpretation a lot. So keep painting until you have all the canvas space filled in. All right, so you can see I'm actually grabbing some more of that burnt sienna with a little bit of raw sienna. And we're going back to the nose. I am focusing a bit more on the burnt sienna just for the nose because he does have this great reddish brown nose. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. We're going to use some raw sienna and we're going to fill in the eyes, the color of the eyes. Again, it's your painting. If you would like a different color, different eye color for your dog, feel free to swap that out. So now we're going to go back to our burnt umber and our uh, burnt sienna, and we're going to start applying our second layer on top of the colors we've already painted. That way we're increasing that opacity and getting rid of some of those brush strokes. And I am using that small pointy brush so I can make some smaller lines and get into tighter spaces. I will be overlapping some of the prior colors that I did. That's okay if you are, your instincts are inclining you to place this color or any of the colors in a space that I don't put it. Trust your instincts. Put it there. If you end up not liking it, let it dry and repaint it with something else. You will learn that the more that you paint, the more that you trust your instincts, the happier you will end up being with the results and the more things you will learn at a quicker pace. So I know it's scary at the beginning to 
trust your instincts, trust something that you may not have trusted in the past. But this is a safe place to give it a try. If you really and truly don't like your painting, you throw it away or you um, re-gesso it and paint something new on top of it. And I do have a video on how to reuse an old canvas. So check that out in my video library. All right, so now going back to that raw sienna, and again, we're gonna be placing it on top of the raw sienna we already put on the canvas. If you ended up doing this painting and you are using the acrylic uh, soft body paints that are thicker, you can skip these steps of uh, where we're basically putting another layer on top of the colors we already placed. And again, as we are placing the second layer on top of our first, it gives us more depth. Um, it makes our colors a bit more opaque. And then it also gives us an opportunity to kind of reshape, um, blend a little bit more, and just kind of play and restructure our painting. So I always tell my students that painting is a conversation with the canvas. Once you get your underpainting done, and that's where all the canvas space is filled in, then you go back and you put other colors on top of that. And you go and use all the colors. If you need your shadow to be darker, then you make your shadow darker. If you need your highlight to be a little bit lighter, then you do that. But it's a conversation that you have with the canvas. That's why there's not an exact formula for everything, because we're all unique individuals and we all see things differently and we all interpret things, interpret things differently. So it could be a group of you painting this painting together and each one of your paintings will turn out a little bit different because each one of you is a different person. I was going to say slightly different, but some of you have big differences between your personalities, but it's one of the things that you like about each other, hopefully. <laughs> All right, so again, we're still applying kind of our second layer of our browns, our different shades on here. And if you paint over those black lines from earlier, that's okay. We will reapply those in a few more steps. All right, so now we're making a light raw sienna, and that is white with some raw sienna mixed in there. And we're gonna put some of our highlight values on top of the colors we were just doing. And you may notice that once you place the color on the canvas, you may need to lighten or darken that color. And what you're noticing is that we interpret our colors based on the color that's right next to it. So the color may look one way on our plate when we mix it, but when we apply it to our canvas, we need to adjust. So feel free to adjust your colors as you need to. Now I am applying wet paint on top of wet, pla wet paint. So my light raw sienna is mixing with the colors underneath it. If you are painting at kind of a swifter pace like I am, feel free to play with that blending. Um, and if you even want to use your fingers to blend, go right ahead. If you are not painting at a swift pace, at a bit more of a leisurely pace like our lazy dog, then kind of embrace that um, pop art feel, that kind of chunkiness and even kind of the separate lines that it creates. And that just happens to be your style for this particular painting. As you paint in the future, take yourself out of your comfort zone. And if you tend to paint really fast all the time, slow yourself down and let each color dry before you apply the next one. If you tend to kind of paint at a bit more slower pace, challenge yourself and paint a little bit faster so you can experience a little bit of that 
blending between the two colors. We only learn by pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone and we end up creating a new comfort zone the more that we do that. So again, this is a safe place to experiment, to try a few different things and just see what happens. Painting is not the end of the world. And you are doing much better than you think you are. And as we get towards the end of the painting, I'm going to encourage that you get out of the chair, walk to the edge of the room, and look at your painting from about 10 to 20 feet away. And that is the normal viewing distance for most things in life, and especially for artwork. And things look entirely different from that distance than they do a couple feet in front of us. So again, play with that as you are creating your painting. All right, so adding some more highlights on the body and again, thickening up that paint. You're doing a great job. Breathe and relax. Hopefully at this point, you are so engrossed in your painting that you kind of forgot about your day or forgot about what you were doing prior to this and you're just relaxing. So pause the video, take your progress photo, and we're gonna add a touch, a light, light, light gray. So we're gonna take some white with a touch of that black or even that burnt umber or raw umber and add it to the white. And we're gonna fill in where the whites of the eyes are around the eye color. And we're going to put a little bit of this color on top of the nose for a highlight. And it does kind of go on the top of the nose and then underneath the nostrils. All right, so pause the video, take your progress photo. And we're going to go back to those outlines that we did at the beginning of the painting. So we're using that small pointy brush and black paint and redoing all the outlines. You can reference your traceable for this section as well. Um, and when we do these lines, I do want you to actually make your lines a little bit thicker. So that way it overlaps the background and the dog. And here when I did the eyeballs, I did actually paint out the catch light. So we will reapply the catch light when we move into white in our next step. Again, with doing these outlines, you're getting really good practice and comfort level with the brush. And if you need to add a little bit of water to your paint, to the black paint, um, that will help with the fluidity of your paint. But just keep in mind, you never want your brush dripping wet. And you'll kind of find your own balance between a little bit of water and the paint on here. And again, that pressure of your brush. So as I'm doing this one, I'm using kind of a medium pressure. So that way I create some of those thicker lines. All right, doing good. He's coming along nice. Very nice, lazy day afternoon. All right, so you're gonna clean your brush. We're gonna move to white paint and put some highlights in. We're gonna redo those catch lights. And again, I'm just kind of putting a dot a little bit over the pupil and a little bit over the eye color. And again, you can reference your traceable for the placement for that. So now we're taking that white and doing a few extra little highlights. And again, use the power of observation to see where I place those and the general shape of, um, of what I'm painting on there with these little dots and little lines. All right, so great job, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I look forward to painting with you again in the future. Have a great day. Cheers. Hey guys, I hope your paintings turned out really cute. As you're uploading these to social media, 
please tag me in your paintings or in your images because I really want to see how they turn out for you. I want to see your progress. I want to see how you're evolving. I really like knowing that you actually watch the videos, you paint something and have a final product. So again, please tag me in your videos or your pictures or your uploads um, or send me an email with what you paint. Again, I want to see what you're doing. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do that. Check out the other videos I have out there. Please leave comments, feedback, suggestions of other things you want me to paint because I do take those into consideration uh, when I make my list of my things and videos that I create. So your feedback is important. Um, I think that kind of takes care of it. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to paint with me. I look forward to painting with you in the future and uh, have a great day. Cheers. We're gonna wait for the plane before we go into that next segment. An initial image, that initial plane Pause for the plane.